Hey guys, this is a Patreon Q&A. If you'd like to sign up for next week's video, simply check out the link in the description. Thanks. There's also going to be spoilers for all of the series that I'm going to be talking about. Nate Dog asks, Do you think that the battle will end with half of the heroes wanting to kill Garo while the other half does? And that's how the Neo Hero arc starts, with the half who doesn't want to kill him splitting up. So yeah, I actually do think that's probably likely to happen. And I wanted to say this in my chapter reviews video, but I try to keep those spoiler free because, you know, not everybody has read the webcomic who views those videos. But what we're seeing with Garo now, and especially Metal Bat, I think is really establishing the end game of this arc with this scenario likely to be playing out. Metal Bat for sure is going to be one of the people that doesn't want to kill Garo because he's developing a camaraderie with him now. He's seeing that, oh, you know what, this guy, he's kind of like me. You know, we both have somebody that we want to protect. Tario is going to be the one who comes in and defends Garo against the heroes. It's going to give Garo the chance to run away. And I think Metal Bat especially is going to view that moment. He's going to be like, wow, just like me and Zenko, or, you know, however Metal Bat contemplates it. Because like I've said many times before, Metal Bat didn't really have too concrete of a motivation to join the Neo Heroes in the first place, and I think this is one's way of correcting that. Let's just go over the original ending real quick, and who the heroes are that explicitly wanted to execute Garo right there and then. So it was mainly just a Mai Mask, Child Emperor, and Zombie Man. A Mai Mask is unfortunately like the most victim of God's system here, clearly. He's just misguided, and he hasn't been shown the light by Saitama yet, so he's still, you know, in his staunch, absolute justice mode, especially at the end of this arc, once he, you know, comes back after being ripped in half by Pure Ugly. Zombie Man, on the other hand, he's more like Metal Knight as to where he's like hard-boiled and pragmatic. And I know that could be easily confused for Malice with both of those characters, but Zombie Man, he's definitely a good guy. Child Emperor, on the other hand, he is misguided as well. And I assure you, he will have a heel turn by the end of the series. He'll come around eventually, and I think this is going to be the big stepping stone to establish his huge character arc that he's eventually going to have. And we also see Genos observing this situation, and he says all they care about is enforcing his execution. This makes sense that Genos would feel this way now, especially since he has been shown the light by Saitama. The whole sequence with Saitama touching Genos' heart was very important. It gives us more insight into who Saitama truly is, as well as showing us that Genos is now on the path of the light, which is another reason why he refers to a Mai Mask as being like similar to his former self. Other heroes that we see observing this but staying silent are like Pig God, Atomic Samurai, Puri. The disciples are kind of cognizant. <laughs> and we have Dark Shine and Flashy Flash who later reveals that he was conscious and it ultimately comes down to Bang, you know, coming out of the rubble and giving Garo a beatdown. And I assume that this has still kind of has to happen because you know they need to wrap up their whole little moment that they're going to have and also you know there needs to be like a catalyst for bang eventually retiring but like i said it's eventually going to lead to tario coming out of nowhere defending garo from everyone being like hey you know what he's actually a good guy he saved me multiple times and he's going to allow Garo to escape so that he could go on to become a Amazon delivery driver. But I do fully expect this to be the catalyst for there to be the civil war amongst heroes, which leads to a lot of them joining the Neo heroes. And I do think that we'll get even more S-class heroes to join the Neo heroes than what originally happened. I don't know who it's going to be, but I do expect more crossovers. Nico L asks, hey man, no question this week. Just figured I'd drop in to say you're you're the goat and thanks for all the awesome content hey thank you nico i know you're just saying that to make me feel better obviously we all know that i'm nowhere close to the goat but i really do appreciate it my friend and also thank you for supporting me for i think two plus years now i haven't forgotten and it really does me a lot majin boros asks so if boros was the dominator of the universe don't you think that would put him at the top priority list of blast and his guardians of the galaxy so not really because i think the dominator of the universe thing is more of just a superlative i mean yeah i'm sure he did a lot of damage to a lot of planets but him conquering the entire universe is near impossible even by one 
One Punch Man universe standards. If anyone is the dominator of the universe, it's God. And like I've said in many videos, Boros is for sure connected to God, and if not even just a product of him unintentionally. Like Boros himself is even a victim of God's system. So that's why Blast's Green Lantern Corps or Guardians of the Galaxy maybe necessarily didn't go after him because he wasn't the real threat. God is for sure. The way that he has like his fingers in Earth, he has his fingers in, I guess, most life-bearing planets. Ryan1595 asks, what do you think was the significance of keeping the USJ Nomu alive? So I assume, first of all, it was just to show that All Might doesn't kill, and also just so that the heroes could get a better understanding of how the Nomus worked so that they can have one in, you know, captivity. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he does show up in this final battle that we're entering now. I mean, the sludge villain is coming back, so why not the USJ Nomu too? I think it would be pretty cool if Izuku defeats him in five punches to show that he is now as strong, or if not even stronger than Prime All Might. David S. asks, I've got a theory about Saitama. I believe that he has been around since the beginning of time and that he is absolute power, and that is why God cannot see him, because he is the literal idea of the absolute. So I'm not going to put down your theory, David. All of us here have our own theories and opinions on Saitama. Saitama and just the overall story in general and we'll only know once the series has been completed. I personally think what we see of Saitama is what we get. There's no like real deeper secret meaning to him other than he started from nothing and then worked his way to becoming the strongest being in existence without ever having to give over to the influence of God. Now I could be wrong and you could be right but in the end like I said we're just gonna have to wait to see but at least you'll have something to look forward to when you could tell me that I was wrong. Garuda asks do you think that the Yonko will become the Goko or something like that since there will be five in total Shanks, Luffy, Blackbeard, Kid, and Law or do you think the whole system will crash like Law reference back in Punk Hazard days. You bring up a pretty good point there, Garuda. I think the system may crash at the end of Wano, possibly. I do think there's going to be like a paradigm shift once this arc is over because there's a lot of converging storylines coming together at that point, especially with what was going on in the Reverie. And I mean like, you know, the beginning of the Reverie and then when we kind of got back to the fallout of it in chapters 957, 58. I personally would like if there's like a short little time skip, it doesn't have to be a year, maybe a couple months or something. That way Oda can kind of push the plot to where it needs to be without adding more excess fat to the story. I'm not saying rush it, of course, but I wouldn't be surprised if like the three powers kind of just all collapse or just get out of whack and then maybe just Luffy and the rest of them are referred to as emperors but maybe they're not necessarily recognized as them by the world government anymore maybe it's kind of just like a free-for-all anarchy within the world. T-Tasty asks do you think Uraraka's quirk came from Tomura since they both have the five finger application and she gets sick from using her quirk too much it could be similar to Aoyama with the quirk not being compatible with her body. So I'll say Sure, it's a possibility, but I just don't think it's likely because there hasn't been any kind of implications with Uraraka in that regard at all. I mean, not like in the slightest bit. The only thing here is her getting sick, but I don't think that's necessarily because it's not compatible with her body. I just literally think it's because of the zero G, like as the exposition tells us. As far as the story has shown us so far, Tomura was born quirkless, and he was for sure given the decay quirk when he was young. Now, I guess it's a possibility that Uraraka was given her quirk by All for One as well, but I personally would not like that because he's already kind of doing too much as it is. And I don't think Uraraka needs the aspect of that to her character to make her more compelling. Sean H asks, would you ever consider doing a review of Dr. Stone? So I read a couple chapters of Dr. Stone a couple years ago, like 2019, I think. And I couldn't really get into it the way that I've gotten into the other series. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm sure it's fantastic. In, in fact, I only hear good things about it, honestly. I haven't heard a bad thing about it yet, but my interests don't really gravitate towards it. So I don't think it's likely that I would review it. Garrett M asks, hey, after your above Dragon Ryuijo video, I realize I have always categorized dragons differently than most, and I think it is more fitting my way. So Garrett, I'll say this. If you think that your way is better, then that's all that matters. Because this power scaling stuff, 
It's not an exact science and there's no right answer, but I fully encourage you to keep using your system. And if you want other people to use it, then, you know, put it out there. But with the power scaling stuff and the disaster levels, there's always going to be like a big argument. And I guess the prevailing opinion will just be who has bullied the others into submission the most. Delamonte asks, Hey Z, would you ever consider doing a meet and greet with subscribers or Patreon members? I'd love to meet you guys. Especially you guys on Twitter. I'd love to see how our interactions would go in real life. So that's it for the video today, guys. I want to thank all of my patrons for continuing to support me. It really does mean the world to me, guys. And I can't thank you enough. Have a great day, everyone. And I'll see you in the next.